So full disclosure, so uh, First Derm was actually one of the services that was tested in that Yama article. And uh, we are a global international uh, company. And I come from Sweden. I've done a lot of uh, research in this area. And I came to San Francisco in 2013. And the first thing you do when you come to America, uh, what's that? Well, you get legal counsel. So it's very important that you find lawyers that you talk to. And so our service has been very much positioned as a medical information service. Uh, we've copied NHS Direct. So instead of having nurses, we have dermatologists. And you as the user, you can send in anonymous uh, images to uh, our platform of dermatologists. So this is typically uh, what a patient would do when they wake up in the morning, they got something red on their body, and then they get about three million results. So they get very confused, they will try and self-diagnose, and maybe they will try and go, to, uh, go and see a doctor, they will end up at a GP's, and the referral time in order to see a dermatologist in the United States is on average 29 days, and I know here in the UK it's up to six months, and in Sweden it's up to three to four months. So what do a lot of patients do? So a lot of patients, they find apps, service like that we have online, so this is typically how a first-time user will come across and find us on the internet. They will take a picture, send it to our dermatologist, and we would, in 70% of the cases, advise them to go and see, uh, no, to go to the pharmacy, and in 30% of the cases, actually go and see a dermatologist. So this is a little bit how the service works. So it's research back, it follows HIPAA compliancy and security, and you just take an overview picture and a close-up picture, you fill in some information, and then you just send it in. And you pay a small fee from $25 up to $100, depending on how quickly you would like to have a response. And then our dermatologists will get on their platform, which is kind of like an Uber platform. They just pick which images they want to answer, and they get paid per uh, image. So this is like a typical short answer, what we think uh, it could be and answer uh, how you could have gotten it and also how to, uh, uh, how to uh, treat it. So we've uh, had over uh, 170,000 downloads of the service. We're available in 160 countries and in six different languages. We do English, Spanish, uh, Swedish, French, Italian and also Chinese. And we're doing also Norwegian quite soon. And we found over 500 dangerous lesions. Uh, what I'm presenting now is data from our iOS app during 2015. I think this is very interesting, the data that we found. We found about 30,000 people who had submitted a case to us. 64% were female and 36% were male. And there was about 11,000 who did not specify their sex. So when you download the app, you don't actually have to register. You don't have to put your name in. You don't have to put your sex. There's no profile that you create. 10% uh, of our uh, users will re recommend a face-to-face -face urgent visit, 54% to, uh, to see, to n did not see, need to see a dermatologist. However, if we removed the pigmented lesions, that number went up to 75%. And here you can see which countries uh, send in the most, so we're active, most active in the US, and since we are also, have also been active in Sweden, we get a lot of cases from there. And then, there are countries all around the world that we also get. You know, we get from Africa, we get from Russia, we get from the Middle East, we get Hong Kong, uh, and also even from China. And the, this is what people usually send in. So this is the top 10. So the top 10 is 61% of what comes into our service. So dermatitis, moles, and acne, and folliculitis. And then you also see that people actually send a lot of queries under the belt. So about 30% that comes into us are actually of, uh, we call them in the United States, dick pics. Yeah, that's what they send in. And 80% of what comes into us is of the 22 most common uh, skin diseases. Interesting here is also conversion rate by age to see who actually paid. And if you see this graph, one, one thing which is quite interesting is these numbers here. These numbers down here should basically be up here on top of that. So you will see the conversion rate, if you're over 35 years old, those are the people that actually 
want to pay. And I think if you're 35 years old plus, you cherish your time a lot more than when you're a student. You know, you have all the time in the world. You take a lot of selfies uh, and so forth. And then uh, I have a friend who works at uh, a venture capital firm in Palo Alto, and she did a quick survey of 600 people in the United States all across regarding telemedicine. So I'll just go quickly through here. So they asked if they have heard of telehealth. So they haven't even heard of, only 6% only had heard of a telehealth service. Which telehealth service providers have you heard of? And 71% out of the ones that they uh, showed up, 71% hadn't heard of any of them. Where did you hear about the telehealth service? Well, they did a search on the internet. And the quality of the telehealth experience, uh, doctor quality, about 60%, the cost, about 50%. And also, how much would you like to pay, even if an urgent care visit is $225, everyone <laughs> wants to pay the lowest, right? So those are the issues that we have with telemedicine. It's great that we all know about it, we know the effects, we know that it works, we know also know what, for what kind of things it does not work. So I want to show you a few first-term cases that come into us. So this one, for example, is from Portugal, 62 years old. Any brave dermatologist uh, would like to answer this first-term case? What would you say? What would you advise? Thank you very much. So what did our doctor answer? This is a picture. Thank you for submitting the case. Based on the history of photo, this is possible squamous cell carcinoma, right? So remember, this is a consumer service. This is what we got on the App Store as a review, one star review. So they got this answer. We told them to go to a dermatologist. <laughs> and we also had here one in the audience who said the same thing. But we got one star review. Shame on us that we deliver a service like this, right? And uh, on the star, you know, Americans say you can look at that one star review, it comes up number two in the app store. But, you know, we cannot answer to this user, right? The user is anonymous. We can't reach out to them. Here's another customer review. There's a five star one. This one's very good. Uh, I spent hundreds of dollars on doctor visits and medication, pretty much resign myself to accepting this. And then, this is typically a pityriasis versicolor uh, possible diagnosis. He went to buy dandruff uh, shampoo, and after three weeks, it had gone, right? <laughs> this one. This is actually a man that dropped off. So we do actually check what kind of cases drop off, right? And we do open up those cases for our dermatologists to answer. So this one, 51-year-old from Canada, he's had it for two years and has been growing on his penis, right? What would you suggest? <laughs> right? So our dermatologist looked at it and said, thank you very much for this. You know, this could actually be penis cancer. We recommend you to go in very quickly, right? So, what's important when you have customers on the internet is customer support. And here's a funny customer that's sent to us. He had paid for a query. He was very disappointed. I submitted this, answer came instantaneously. That's how fast our dermatologists are and how our te technology has built up. I want a refund, right? <laughs> So how do, you, how do you answer this guy? <laughs> right? So this is how you answer. Thanks for reaching out to us. The case was answered 11 minutes. <laughs> right? We do have dermatologists on board. You bought the cheap version <laughs> of two days. I'm so sorry we were too fast for you. <laughs> right? If you'd like to read more about your condition, we put a link in and basically came back. He was very happy with the response. So they like to have the response that support is also actually there to help out. So 
last picture here. Some people in the audience are actually also working on teledermatology as we speak. <laughs> so, before I open the questions to the floor here, uh, Amanda, how much do you make per image or case? Oh, well, <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>